Welcome back, everybody. So it is Wednesday, the 16th of February. I think it's the 16th, 14th, 15th, 16th, whatever Wednesday. Um, got a little bit of a late start today. Was hoping to get out here a little earlier and get cranking, um, but I didn't. But I've been cranking on trying to fill up the holes in the firewall and this thin firewall. I wanna get all that done. Um, just all the tedious work that goes along with putting a car together and making it look somewhat decent. So let me show you what I have so far. So I got that portion uh, here where the gas pedal was at. I got that filled in. I got some other holes filled in. I need to cut some like basically little back plates to fill up these big holes. I want to get everything to where there's no holes in the firewall at all. And then whatever we end up doing for wiring, we can make our new holes. Um, and like the intercooler tank, we can make our new holes for that. Um, in the last video, I said the next project was probably gonna be the rear tubs, which it may or may not. I wanna get the motor back in here um, and then get it, I see if I can get the bell housing in there. Um, but what I've been doing, or what I'm gonna do, let me show you rather. So this is obviously the piece that I got for the mid plate. And you, you can see it's just this little half rinky dink plate. Now this back plate, that's the one that comes with the bell housing. So I'm going to go tomorrow. I don't have time today, but I'm gonna go tomorrow and grab a piece of an eighth inch thick plate. I'm gonna go to my buddy Merle's house tonight and he's got some centered dies that you can basically drop in a hole. They're the size of the hole. And then you can hit it with a hammer and it'll dot the metal and it'll make sure that the center is where the center should be. And I'm gonna remake this whole plate out of one eighth inch thick piece for the mid plate and then get that back in the car and get the stands that I made um, welded in. I got the front ones welded in as you already knew that I added a little triangulated brace to them because um, they were a little bit flimsy uh, it's hard to see but back there I welded a little piece to stouten them up I welded nuts to the back and then I have these that are going to go that are basically going to sit here I'm not sure if I've showed you guys this or not but they'll basically sit back there and that's what that um, mid plate that's what the mid plate will bolt to. So I want to get all that done um, tomorrow. I thought I would get further today banging out the uh, firewall pieces, but my gosh, this little firewall is, I mean, I've welded on thin metal and I can weld on thin metal with the MIG, but man, you barely touch it and it just disappears. It's very thin. Some of the holes that are in the firewall look like when you go get a conduit, like you go get a box for conduit to run your electrical in and you push the little circular piece out, that's how some of these holes are in the firewall. They're like um, already pre-stamped and you can push them open. So I'm trying to get all that welded shut. And uh, I was hoping, like I said, I'm hoping to have that done before I even put the engine back in here. But it is what it is. A guy needs sleep sometimes and uh, got big ambitions to get up early and get out here and sometimes man you just gotta sleep in but that's what we got going um it's about 3 15 i'm getting ready to uh roll over to my buddy merle's like i said and uh we'll see what he's got and then i'll just remake that plate i wish i had a big enough freaking bandsaw that i could bandsaw that whole thing out but i'm gonna have to use the death wheel to get it um and i'm kind of only concerned about getting the exact the two holes exact um are where the dowels go and then obviously i guess the where the starter goes so it don't sound like some junky old chevrolet when you start it hopefully the um starter is in the right spot but i'm fairly confident that i can do this with a death wheel and um those punches that merle's got i can get this thing pretty freaking close 
and then I'll ha just have one big um, mid plate and it won't be that flimsy little thing that I have now. All right, good morning, you guys. It's Thursday the 17th, I think. And uh, gotta go get my hair cut here in a sec, but what I've got, all right, I think I already showed you what I was doing with the mid plate. So just to show you how freaking scatterbrained I get sometimes, I went to the metal supply place to get um, an eighth inch thick piece of cold rolled steel for the mid plate, block plate, whatever you wanna call it. Well, they didn't have eighth inch cold rolled in a remnant. They wanted me to buy a four by 10 sheet and I don't need that much freaking eighth inch cold rolled. So the next step down was 12 gauge. That's 110 thousandths. And the block plate that came with the bell housing is like 115 thousandths. So there's a five thousandths difference, which ain't gonna be a big deal. So I have them go ahead and cut the uh, 14 gauge think that I'm you know in it to win it and I get here lay this thing out on on the cold rolled basically that's the outside I've got to get all the holes drilled and get that cut out but look the last time I was at the metal place 14 gauge cold rolled two by four so the last time I was there the guy there hooked me up on that piece of metal um, I had got 14 gauge hot rolled and that was sitting there and he's like, you know, here, just take this one. It's fine. So me being in a rush cost me freaking 70 bucks to have them um, get this remnant down, cut it when I already had the stuff here. So I feel stupid, but uh, I'm going to have to death wheel the outside of this thing out. Just take my time and uh, and death wheel it. I've got the Harbor Freight uh, Bower Saw right here with the Swag Off-Road setup, and I love that thing, but, you know, it's, there's just not a lot of throat here where it can cut, so I got to do what I got to do to get this um, cut out, but that's what I'm going to be doing. After I get my hair cut, we'll roll over to Merle's again. He gave me some uh, transfer punches. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. But basically, let me show you what a transfer punch is. So these are transfer punches and they come in all kinds of different sizes. But basically what you're doing, um, you know, say you need a half inch hole or whatever and you need to transfer it like what I'm doing. I'm going to lay the one thing that I made on top of the other. Just basically put this in the hole. It's the same diameter as the hole. And then once you smack it with a hammer, it basically puts a center and you know that you're centered in that hole so i picked those up last night but he's saying that he might have some bushings or something else that'll even help us get closer to as perfect as you can get i mean it ain't a laser but um help me get closer so that's what we're gonna do i've got about 45 minutes before i gotta be at the haircut place so i may run inside throw on my grubby clothes and uh or even go put on my coveralls i guess and just cut this the basic shape of this thing out. That way when I go to Merle's, we can concentrate on um, lining the holes up. The only two I'm really concerned about are the two dowel holes. There's play for all the other holes in the block and then uh, the starter holes. So the dowel holes and starter holes, I want to be good, so. Wholesaw. 
All right, we got the plate cut out, basically the rough shape, and uh, all deburred and all that. We're on our way to Merle's. I'll see if Merle will let me film. Merle, I've known him. He's obviously probably known me, but I, my first memories of him are probably at age 14 or 15. And Merle, he's in his 70s, uh, but he's an old guy that knows all kinds of shit and knows how to do all kinds of shit. And um, just one of those guys that, you know, if, you, if it's something odd or the guy just knows everything. It don't matter what it is, wiring, plumbing, hot rods, welding. The guy knows knows his stuff so i oftentimes um and he's a good person for for advice he ain't judgmental he doesn't get nervous over the small things in life he's a good person to uh, have a beer with and talk about either your problems or the world's problems so i was just wondering if anybody is like who is this merle guy that he goes and sees but um if he lets me film I'll film, but we're going to, I've got everything with me, the bell housing, the other template, and then the new one that we're making, and I'm just going to take it all over here, and we'll see if we can get it done all at his house, and uh, if I've got to do anything at home, no big deal, but um, stay tuned. holes drilled up here and probably just gonna put you guys on a time lapse my phone's low on battery so put you on a time lapse and we're gonna get this done we got it we got it Tyler. we got it Are all the holes perfect we might need a little take that with you you know take that grinder or that sand uh, barrel drum here barrel. all right we got the mid plate done we got all the bow holes exactly where they needed to be merle's got that uh as you can see like that steamboat thing i think he called it a steamboat and i mean that thing you're able to put the hole exactly where it needs to be so uh, we'll go home. I need to clean up the shop a little bit, and then we'll set the engine in and see what it's like. Maybe, maybe we can try to put the bell housing. you guys it's sunday the 28th 7th 19th something 29 20 i don't know what sunday whatever and i've spent quite a lot of time you see me grinding now i'm trying to get the holes in the firewall all welded up it's definitely gonna have to have body work i don't know why but it's like thin thin um you just barely touch it and goes through <clears throat> And uh, so I got the engine set back in here. I think my little perches in the front may have moved a little bit. I welded some gussets. And I think it may have moved just, they may have moved just a little bit. So I had to uh, address that and open the holes up a little bit in the uh, front plate. 
but I've got it all sat down back on the plates, front and mid. And I think I'm gonna push it into the lift bay and then we'll lift it up. And see if that bell housing will go in here. All right, you guys, yesterday I said we would get this thing up on the lift and I uh, ended up, had too much other stuff to do. Did push it into the lift bay, but we're gonna get it up now. Check underneath and see like what the steering shaft, uh, the clearance looks like for the steering shaft. Where we're gonna, where we're gonna put the um, engine travel limiter thing and then see if the bell housing fits. So we'll get up on the lift and check it out. underneath how close the that is there and then the mid plate that we made that's what it looks like so it'll catch and then uh need to weld those to the frame and let's probably put you guys on a stand and see if we can get the bell housing in this thing Closer than I mean, it's close right there. You know, that's probably well, it shouldn't hit, but that's close. But it did go in there. I'm freaking shocked. I watched some other video from I think they were from up north, a little red um, Falcon. I'll see if I can link it up here. Um, but they had to cut out a ton of stuff to get an AOD in one of these cars so. Maybe I've got the engine low enough to where I don't need to cut a whole bunch. I mean, obviously, this cross member is gonna have to go. There ain't no way a T56 is going through there and probably not even through here, to be honest with you. But gosh, I can't believe the bell housing goes on. That's, that's awesome. So I can get these bolts, I mean, way easy. These are no problem. Uh, the next hole up, that, that hole right there, that one, that's not used. I think this is for, it fits a couple different Ford blocks. But if you look up there, the top one, that's gonna be a problem. So, um, same on this side, it's, way tight so i'll have to figure something out there but i'm gonna run these bad boys in and then i'll catch back up with you in a second all right i got two bolts on each side tight and this is what joel grants was talking about uh usually when this is on motor mounts this whole thing can tilt down and you can get to all those bolts easy uh, i cannot um so i'm gonna have to maybe do something to where i can take this tunnel off and be able to get to these bolts i don't know either that or i may try uh like a stud see what kind of hardware arp has and maybe try like a stud with a nut that might be easier to get to uh i'm gonna lower the car down sorry for the light i'm gonna lower the car down and see if i can get to those top ones from the top um I'll do that in a minute. I'm gonna grab a starter, not the starter I'm gonna use, but I have a starter. We'll, we'll see about getting the starter in here. See about getting the starter in here. And then uh, that travel limiter, which will bolt to the motor mounts right there. A lot of room right here, um, but I am probably gonna be limited with area where I run the 
the thing from. I mean, probably the further back it is, the stronger it's, it would be, but nonetheless, we'll get that going and see what kind of room we have there. And I had to kind of machine this open a little bit because this is like a four, four inch, 100 thousandths hole. And all I had was a four inch hole saw. So hopefully the starter will even go in there. I think that's gonna work, you guys. I think it's, may need a little massaging in here. Let me get some bolts. I think, yeah, we're close. I'm gonna have to open this up a little more, but I'm gonna grab some bolts and then mark where I need to do that. Looking like on the, the inside, or I'm just gonna be really trimmed. Those screw holes do line up. Perfect. All right, sorry for the bad lighting, but we got that piece on. I'm gonna block the light out here. We got that piece on, and this thing swivels whatever way you want it to go. So we'll keep going and probably gonna get it as far back here, honestly, as I can get it. But as you can see, I mean, once the transmission's in this thing, it won't be so bad, but yeah, it, it wallows a lot back and forth, no doubt. So we got everything loose, but we got this in there. I can use the entire length of the stick of chromoly they sent. It'll go behind where the K member bolts with no problems, so that gives, you know, a lot of front and back support rather than if you were to just try to catch it before. Now I'm gonna unbolt it, and I'm gonna see if I can use that sucker over here, and if I can, I'll order another one. And look at that, plenty of room, not gonna hit the steering, um, clears the K-member, the K-member bolts, so I will be ordering another one of these from Motion Raceworks. Um, this is a nice piece. That's what people tell me that some of their stuff's junk, but this is a nice piece. So I'll be ordering another one of those. Did a little more marking on the starter so I could, I think it's more here than it is here. Actually, I'm looking in there with a light. But look at these freaking holes, how perfect they are. That's why you gotta trust the old man because he knows what he's doing. They're all perfect. Excellent. All right. I think that'll about do it for this video. Uh, on the next one, I need to get out all the T56 parts and kind of start going through that and figure out what we're going to do there and get the uh, rear end stuff, get that start, get that figured out and subframes and all that BS. But um, I guess this is the time in the video where I'm going to switch it up on you guys a little bit. Uh, no, I ain't going LS. But I was going to do the stock bottom end thing and see how much it would take. But I had opportunity to get a block, a crank, some pistons, and I need rods. But this is a big chunk of what I need to make the type of power that I need to make to be competitive and stick shift anything. Um, so I'll show you what I got. We have acquired a boss block. Thanks to Tony. Actually had the opportunity to buy this a while ago and neither here nor there, but so, uh, boss block, 8.2 deck, of course. Uh, the underside of this bad boy, Boss 302, way stouter than a stock piece for sure, and should be able to handle enough power that, that I need to make, um, that's for certain. 
and we got i did a little bit of color and i'm gonna there's a part number that's stamped in there but it's a sob to c because it's rough like that but uh it's it's a scat crank three four hundred stroke and then four one twenty five pistons should be depending on the cc of the head should be like 11 to 1 i think that's what tony was saying i need to um look at some of this stuff and figure figure some stuff out um but there you go four one twenty five bore so obviously i need to get my hands on i need to see what that thing is first and see if that crank's going to handle the power we're trying to make and then rods make sure that the rods i have will handle the power we're trying to make um if i can get this little car to be less than three thousand pounds and then once i'm in it and fuel's in it it's three thousand and if it'll make i don't know a thousand to the tire i think we could be really competitive i think so um but now that's that's the new direction that we're going may have to get a bigger turbo i don't know i know that vs racing one will make over a thousand i know their gen 3 is supposed to make like 150 more um but like i say you guys sometimes you just got to pull the trigger and use what you got and then we can step it up later thank you guys very much for watching and going through this tedious process uh, sometimes it's hard to keep the content coming just because it's you know building a race car is not cheap at all especially if you're trying to make um over a thousand horsepower it's it, it's expensive no doubt but um thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one